Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my talk on Home Lab on NixOS. Um, last year, I already um, had the opportunity to hold a talk on NixOS in general, um, where I also talked about the details of Nix language and, and the Nix packages repository and um, all those things. So um, if you're interested in that, if you didn't join us last year, um, it's still available on uh, my blog, so you can still read up on it. And I think the recordings are still available on YouTube and also the uh, Chaos Computer Club's uh, media server, where this year's recordings will go on as well. Um, before I introduce myself, thanks to the Graz Linux Saga and everyone helping um, for allowing me again to present something I'm interested in, and hopefully you as well. Um, you have the opportunity to follow this talk live. It's an HTML presentation. Um, I just noticed, however, before the presentation that there is some issue with rendering, so um, I will update it later on. Um, you can find the presentation um, in PDF format as well as the HTML version later on um, once I concluded this talk. All right, so who am I? My name is Matthias Thiem. Um, I studied at Graz University of Technology. Um, I currently work as a DevOps engineer and kind of automation specialist at Smextech. Um, they have their offices also located here on the campus. I would consider myself a Linux advocate, and I've been an avid user of uh, free and open source software for many years. And also, I've been using NixOS as my daily driver um, for many years by now, and also since my um, last job as my daily driver at work. So it's stable. All right, so first let's talk about what a home lab is. Um, basically, you could describe a home lab, nope, Sorry, the pointer doesn't do what I expect it to do. All right, uh, there should have been a picture of a laboratory. Um, somehow the slide got skipped. But basically, a lab is uh, an environment where you can safely do experiments in. Um, that's in chemistry, that's perhaps the lab uh, most people are thinking of. But um, before I start, I have a quick question. How many of you would say that they work in IT or a related field? Could you raise hands? Okay, I expected that somehow. So um, most of you will probably agree that it's not a good idea to work on uh, production systems and production equipment and use it as a lab environment. So at times you want to perhaps have an actual lab environment to uh, test things, to test software, um, to uh, test deployments, whatever. Um, so many of us will opt for building a production environment at home. And that should then be an environment where we can safely do experiments in. Uh, home labs can look differently. Um, they can be production grade um, enterprise servers that um, universities or companies get rid of and you bought for cheap. Um, so on the left, that's pretty impressive. But I would say the one on the right is also pretty impressive for a home lab. Um, here combined with a 3D printer, but of course it can also be something small like a cluster of some single board computers. Uh, I think those are some Raspberry Pis here and some um, off-the-shelf NAS as like, um, yeah, a, a NAS appliance. Of course it can also be all those things combined uh, together with some networking equipment. Uh, we see a universal power supply here. Um, so home labs can look very different. So now quickly, I will go over what Nix is. Um, it's not uh, to be confused with like Nix in Unix. So um, there is a, Nix, a Linux distribution called NixOS that I will talk about today. But Nix is all of those things. I talked about these last year, so if you're interested in the Nix language or the package library or the package manager itself, um, please consider watching the recording of last year. Uh, what is Nixos? It started as a research project in 2003. Um, it took off about 10 years later, and there have been several stable releases uh, in, in always in May and November of every year, and they receive bug fixes and security updates for um, about half a year as well. Sorry. 
All right. So how does configuring NixOS look like? Um, NixOS heavily depends on system D, al although there is experimental support for some other init systems, but basically uh, most things that you define as a service on NixOS will be started as a system D unit. Um, you can see some system configuration in here that's not um, required for a home lab, but of course can be, uh, can make a lot of sense. Um, for example, here you have the SSD trimming enabled to extend the life of some SSDs you might have in your server. Um, you have the handling of the power button and things like that. Uh, now, how can a service on NixOS look like? Um, there are a lot of modules on NixOS. So um, the simplest um, possible configuration for a service on your home lab could be just to enable it. So you can go to the NixOS option search and uh, basically look for any service you know from, I don't know, your uh, current home lab, for example, if you're running Debian or whatever and you have Prometheus set up there, uh, you will probably find an option in the Nix packages as well. Um, last year I talked about the freshness and the overall availability of packages in NixOS. It's pretty good. Um, so mostly all the packages you will find on other Linux distributions will be available on NixOS. That doesn't mean, however, that there will be a module. But especially in the last few years, a lot of modules were created. So how would this look like? Um, homepage dashboard is a service um, that creates a landing page. So I use this for my home lab. Um, it's a simple landing page that shows you like uh, CPU and memory utilization and also disk space. And then you basically have the option to list whatever you're interested in, whatever's running on your home lab. You can um, list all of your services here. You can uh, use it like a link list. You can use it for your blog posts. Um, and that's just there. You just have to enable the module rebuild your NixOS system configuration and it will be available at the default port. Of course, then we can also look at some other more complex um, configurations. For example, here, um, perhaps some of you will know that Notify is like a notification service um, that I use to get notifications from all kinds of services like uh, Grafana or, or Home Assistant. And I've got it set up um, in a way as like on the subdomain of my domain, no, that's not my domain. Um, for reasons I will not disclose my domain. I don't want to get DDoSed. Um, but basically, the first thing you always do when you want to enable a service is use um, enable the service. And the rest um, will hopefully be some, uh, somewhat documented in the module itself. Um, and scroll here, so I have to do it here. So this service module, for example, requires you to specify a group and a user. Um, it will then also uh, use the base URL. You can use the, the uh, variable substitution, like I did here, to not uh, write your URL or your domain over and over again. And of course, you will then have to configure some stuff like um, databases, or if you want to use uh, the Prometheus metrics, if you want to scrape an endpoint with Prometheus in the end. And all of those configurations are usually um, documented in the Nixos module. Um, for some things, NixOS modules sometimes break. Um, I think that's the case for a lot of distributions. Sometimes things break. So what can we do? Oh, first, um, this is how it looks like. Um, this could be some notification you're getting from like your backup um, routine. So if something failed or if uh, it's successfully completed, you configure a service to then point at the notifications dot domain whatever, and it will um, it can also authenticate um, via I think SSO, and um, you can then get all of your not notifications on like one page. Uh, quite useful. Uh, this c could also um, be used for like very useful notifications like uh, something from Home Assistant, um, your Home Assistant server letting you know that uh, you left the house, hopefully you know as well, before you get the notification. Um, but it asks you if you want to tur uh, turn down the AC, um, could make sense to save some energy. So you can also integrate um, some things into your notifications, some functionality to then trigger some other um, some other hooks. 
All right, so I already mentioned that sometimes NixOS modules don't work or don't exist or break. Um, you can, of course, wait for some busy maintainer to fix um, the module, but perhaps you want to get around it. And what does everyone like to use in their home lab? Docker. So if the NixOS module for some reason doesn't work, you can just use a Docker container. Why not? Um, I use a mix of like um, system um, modules and Docker containers and Podman and whatever. And of course, you can also do that. So for example, I had troubles getting Home Assistant to run. I had troubles um, using a declarative um, configuration for my uh, Home Assistant config. So that's not because NixOS is so bad, but that's because some projects, especially projects that were written in Python oftentimes, um, have some way to handle configuration that is not really all that compatible with um, a declarative configuration. They rely on like rewriting the config when the system is already running. So I had some issues with that, but no problem. I can just create the Docker container. So there is the OCI containers uh, virtualization module um, where you can just spin up containers from a declarative Nixus configuration, and it will then launch the Docker uh, unit again as a systemd unit. Of course, you can pass all the options that you're used to from uh, Docker Compose or Docker files, and you can just map your ports as expected. And hopefully, after all that, even if the NixOS module didn't work, um, you can have your Home Assistant dashboard. So that means that while it's possible to have a fully declarative um, home lab environment with NixOS, most people don't. Most people try to get it as declarative as possible, but it's quite hard to do it because some services just don't want to be declaratively configured. All right. Um, I wanted to leave some space for questions because last year we were running out of time a little bit. Um, but just as an example for uh, some services that are available as NixOS modules, uh, some of them I use. We see Home Assistant here. We see um, ESP Home. Jellyfin is available, a fantastic media server. We have Uptime Kuma. Um, if you have any questions about these, feel free to ask me later on if you're interested in running that on your own home lab. Um, we have DNS services like Pi-hole or Edguard, um, also very useful to run on your home lab. Uh, we have monitoring solutions like Prometheus combined with Grafana. Uh, we have password managers like Vault Warden, uh, which is the open source um, implementation of, of Bitwarden. And we can, of course, host our own Git forges. So perhaps you don't want to um, have all of your code on GitHub, or not only on GitHub or on GitLab. Uh, why not host your own Gitforge? It's really easy on Nexus. You can just enable the module, configure a few things, and you can find all kinds of, of configurations from other people online. Um, it's really a nice community that has come up in the last few years where you can exchange your config ideas. You can uh, see how other people do it. For example, I like to modularize all of my configs so that I can basically, for a new host, just turn on modules so that it's even easier than just having a configuration for one host. I basically have a configuration for one module, and then I just um, enable the module on whichever host I want to use the module on. Um, that almost brings me to the end of the module section. Um, I want to uh, talk about these five. So we see the WireGuard logo, uh, Nginx, the Nginx proxy manager, Caddy, and uh, the traffic proxy. Um, I have the opportunity to hold another talk today. It's a lightning talk, um, so it's just five minutes. I won't ramble like I do now. Um, if you're interested in how to expose your home lab services, so let's say you have set up Grafana and Prometheus on NixOS or even on any other Linux distribution, but you're still unsure whether your, um, your home lab environment is kind of secure, um, perhaps you have some open ports, which is never quite a good idea. Um, it can work for years and years, but perhaps at some point uh, some bad actor finds your IP, finds an open port, and they will DDoS you or will do other kinds of bad things. So if you're interested in how to then expose these services um, in a safe and secure manner via a WireGuard VPN without a lot of configuration, um, you're invited to join me in uh, the lightning talk that's in uh, the other um, venue. 
And of course, at the end, um, a lot of people have a Minecraft server um, on their home lab. So yes, there is a Minecraft server module on Nixus. Um, I'm sure that not all of you are using Nixus. So if you are interested in Nixus, if you want to know more about it, um, we launched a Nixus user group like one and a half years ago. I already promoted it last year. There have been a couple of meetings in Vienna. There's one today that I unfortunately cannot join. Probably all of you can't either. But we really want to get a, a user group meeting going in Graz as well. So if you're interested, either message me um, or go to uh, nixos.at and let me know that you're interested. Um, we have a mat matrix channel. Um, we have the website where all of the meetings are posted. So either come up to me later on and tell me you would be interested in learning about Nixos and perhaps you're already using it. Perhaps you have a multi-boot with your favorite Linux distribution and you're curious. Um, just let me know. Like I said, today there is a meetup in Vienna. Um, if you're going back home, perhaps, and you can make it in the evening. Um, yeah. Um, like I said, I will publish this presentation online. Um, so you can find my modular and admittedly messy configuration on Codeberg, which is an, another Gitforge. And for people that are already running home labs, but perhaps not Nixos, I can definitely recommend the awesome self hosted uh, list. Perhaps most of you know these awesome lists on GitHub. They are community-maintained uh, community lists, um, mostly of free software, and in this case, of free software services and web applications that you can host on your own home server or in your home lab. Um, and then, of course, if you have questions about Nix, if you want to learn more, there's also an awesome Nix site. Some attributions, mostly for uh, completion's sake. And that brings me, hopefully, to an early end of my presentation, and we have some time for questions. Uh, why use uh, modules from Nixos over just Docker container? Um, so the question was, I should repeat them, um, is why would you even use Nixos modules over Docker containers? Um, for some applications, Docker, spinning up Docker containers is easy. Um, it's kind of reproducible, but also it's not. Um, so things on NixOS, especially modules, should be a lot more reproducible. Um, you should be able to run a module for years and years without it breaking. Of course, that doesn't always happen. But um, also some Docker containers require a lot of configuration. So, of course, if you do the OCI container um, stuff that I showed here, um, it's basically the same. You have to do all of this configuration. So over that, you can basically just use a Docker file. Um, that's useful if you're already running NixOS and you want to kind of have everything in one configuration. A lot of NixOS users want that. Um, if you are fine with combining NixOS modules for the stuff where the module just works great, where you just have to enable it and it works, um, and you're fine with mixing that with like your traditional Docker Compose setups. That's what I did. Like I had a home lab running on Debian. Um, I had a home lab running on other Linux distributions, and I used Docker. I used Docker Compose. I used Ansible at some point. Um, no more. <laughs> um, it's gradual. You can look at the Nixos modules. Um, you can not use the Nixos modules on other distributions. You can use Nix on other distributions. But um, for someone trying out Nixos, and this talk is about home lab on Nixos, um, it's really useful to know that you don't have to go all in. You can keep your services running. Perhaps, like it is for me, your family is relying on your password manager and your perhaps Gitforge for your colleagues at university or whatever. Um, it gives you the opportunity to kind of get to know the Nixos module system, the whole environment, without kind of having to create all the configuration at the very beginning. I hope that somehow answers it. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, the question was, how do I deploy all of my configuration changes to all of my devices? Um, there are different projects that you can use to deploy Nixos configurations. I think by now there are in like more than 10, definitely. Um, I personally, um, in my home network, I uh, usually use a remote builder, which is my most powerful machine. 
but I will mostly log into each um, like system, um, pull the latest configuration, and then just rebuild from there. If I do it on a Raspberry Pi, that would take ages. Um, so I'm using a remote builder, which is my desktop PC with like 16 threads, um, to build the Raspberry Pi configuration. So stuff like that perfectly works fine. Um, but there are also a lot of deployment solutions. Um, I can't think of uh, one right now by name, but does someone know? There are a couple of. Patrizio, I think you know. So that's kind of how I do it as well. Um, sorry, uh, the question, well, the answer. The answer is um, some people do it like I do. Um, so the member of the audience uh, does it as well, that you log into a host and then you um, kind of pull all of your configuration changes and just rebuild on the system itself. Um, if you are interested in these deployment solutions, um, there are recordings of the Nix conference in Darmstadt. Um, that I was fortunate enough to be able to join in, uh, at some point last year. Um, they presented a lot of those. Unfortunately, I can't remember the solution's names, but um, just check them out, and I'm sure these people will know what they are talking about, and I don't want to explain something I'm not using. Yeah, um, so the, the comment from the audience was that um, you kind of always have to have root access to your hosts running Nixos. Um, that's true in a sense. Um, so tonight's meetup in Vienna deals with Disco and Nixos Anywhere, uh, two very interesting projects uh, that can help you set up uh, kind of without a lot of pre-configuration Nixos on hosts like virtual private servers. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, perhaps I can ask the people meeting up in Vienna to uh, write up their um, notes, but also um, check out the recordings of NixCon because there were a lot of interesting talks about those uh, topics. Any other questions? All right, so once again, uh, feel free to join my next talk. It will be quite a bit shorter, just five minutes, but it goes hand in hand with this talk. Um, like I said, you don't have to be a NixOS user to want to expose some services in your home lab publicly. You want to have them perhaps accessible via a domain, but you also don't want to expose any private, uh, any ports in your home network or any IP. Um, so if you're interested in that, please join me later. Um, I think at like uh, in like 10 minutes. So we have to conclude this one now, I think, because I have to move to the other <laughs> um, lecture hall. Again, thank you very much. <laughs>